In previous videos we've looked at shutter speed, aperture and ISO, the three controls that we need to affect exposure onto the sensor. So now we're going to look at exposure in a bit more detail. So exposure is all about controlling the amount of light hitting the actual camera sensor and I say we just need the three controls so the thing to remember is that for each exposure the camera sensor requires a fixed and exact range of light intensity to create an image of the correct brightness and density. The trouble is the lighting of the photograph scene is totally variable. So we need controls to adjust the amount of light into the camera sensor so that it, it's always of the correct value. So we have the three controls, shutter speed or sometimes time value, aperture, aperture value and ISO, the film speed or as it is now the sensor sensitivity setting. And it all comes together in what we call the exposure triangle and we can see here we've got aperture, the lens opening, exposure time, shutter speed and ISO, the sensor sensitivity. So these three all work in concert to create the, the exact amount of light needed on the camera sensor irrespective of the brightness of the outside scene. We can of course use filters to control the amount of light going through the camera sent onto the camera sensor uh, like neutral density filters uh, and polarizing filters but they always reduce the amount of light getting through into the camera. But we're not going to we're not going to look at those this time we're just going to concentrate on the three main camera controls. So exposure is the act of exposing a light sensitive medium. These days it's a digital camera. It would have been a film in the olden days uh, to light from a scene. So most scenes have a limited brightness range from the, from the deep blacks uh, through to the mid-tones and the very light areas. So we can see here we've probably got some very bright clouds and very dark shadow areas contributing to this brightness tonal range. A camera sensor can only capture detail within a fixed brightness range. It's got its own very bright to very dark range that it must stay within, the brightness must stay within in order to uh, render a correctly exposed image. So if the brightness of the scene admitted by the camera matches the brightness required by the sensor, we get a correctly exposed image. So that's what exposure is all about. Trying to match the outside illumination with that needed by the sensor. But the trouble is the acceptable brightness range for the sensor is fixed. We know we can change the ISO setting but once it's set it is fixed. But the brightness of the scene is variable. Going from very bright all the way through to very dark. But the camera sensor can only correctly record a specific brightness range. Okay, so if we get it wrong, the image looks bright, very bright, really bright, darker, darker, and totally black. So we need controls to regulate the amount of light hitting the actual camera sensor. Traditionally with film cameras we only had two exposure controls, uh, shutter speed, uh, and we can see that the, the longer the shutter was left open, more light got onto the film as it was. Uh, and the shorter the time, the less light got onto the film. Uh, sensor the digital sensor these days, of course. And these are the ranges of shutter speeds that are typically available. So 30 seconds, 15, 8, 4, 2, 1. And then we get into the fractions of a second, all the way up to some cameras have uh, 1 8,000th of a second, or even, even shorter. Then we have aperture, that's the hole, the aperture, the, the lens hole, uh, and a large hole lets in more light and a small hole lets in less light. And these are the f-stops, the aperture f-stops that we get on a typical range of lenses. Now each one of these, as we've already gone through, is uh, f1.4, reducing by half the amount of light to f2, half the amount of light 
2.8, half the amount F4. If we go the other way, it's double, double, double. Same with shutter speed, half the amount of light, half, half, double, double, double. And these are in stops, what we call stops. But now, of course, we have adjustable center uh, sensitivity, the ISO. So we kind of a high sensitivity and less light is needed on the sensor to achieve a correctly exposed image. If you have a low sensitivity, like 100 ISO, then we need more light on the sensor to achieve that same brightness level of the image. And these are the kind of ISO settings that we have. Starting off from about 100 ISO for typical cameras these days, these ISO settings were like in the old film days, all the way up to some really high settings these days. So after setting your ISO, the correct exposure value is then achieved by adjusting the shutter speed and aperture. And each change in the above increases or decreases the exposure by double or half. Now I know that a lot of modern cameras have incremental uh, numbers between these, you know, a, a half or a third, or if you're on an automatic setting, then a, a virtually infinite range of variations between these numbers. But for understanding, it's best to just think of these in fixed one-stop increments. So here we have our typical scene. And the possible brightness values, as we've said, uh, is totally variable. So it could be from very bright through to very dark. And back to bright again. So we can adjust the ISO setting, the sensitivity setting of our camera. And here we have the typical range of ISO sensitivities. I've set this, this is what we would normally do. We'd set the ISO to a value that we think that we need for a particular shot. So in this case, I've set it to 100 ISO. From there, we need to then adjust the shutter speed and the aperture to get the right amount of light from that scene, which could be any variation in here, to that exact requirement here to give us the correct exposure. So aperture value, shutter speed. And here we have our range of aperture values. And here we have our range of shutter speeds. Now, in the olden days, before we had exposure meters and things like that, on the back of a film camera, or of a, a packet of film, you'd see what's called the Sunny 16 rule of thumb. And that kind of uh, states that if you have a 100 ISO film, or sensor sensitivity, you can set the camera shutter speed to a hundredth of a second. So ISO 100, shutter speed 100. That's how it's related. If that was ISO 200, you'd set it to 200 shutter speed. And an aperture of f16, which is where the sunny 16 rule comes from, then you will get a correctly exposed image on a sunny day. Now, we, we don't have a hundred uh, of a second, but we've got a very close one, 125 of a second here. So ISO 100, 125 of a second, F16 will give you a correctly exposed image without any exposure meter on a sunny day. So that was a, a rule of thumb. And if we look at the settings that we got here, 100 ISO, now I've set it to F8 at 500th of a second. But if we look down to F16, so we're reducing the amount of light, reducing the amount of light by four, uh, two stops, to f16 we've got if we move across it's one two five of a second which is increasing the amount of light increasing the amount of light by two stops so we can see that these range of apertures and range of shutter speeds are equivalent so once we've set the iso setting f8 500th of a second 5.6 a thousandth of a second f4 two thousandth of a second Okay, these would give you identical exposures for that particular lighting, lighting amount. We can use any of those um, combinations 
to get exactly the same brightness range to give us a, our image. Okay, so set your ISO and then uh, adjust your aperture and shutter speed. But once you've got a correct combination, then we can change either one of the well, go and change the aperture and we can change the, the, uh, the shutter speed in combination like this so we can achieve the same exposure with different camera settings. So that's the whole art of exposure control. So hopefully that's given you a little bit more idea as to what it's all about.